Yeah, good afternoon. Thank you so much for your attention this morning and that even that you have this patience to go on this afternoon. Wonderful. Um, I was asked about the material I am sharing. Um, so you get, of course, the presentation of the morning, then this one too, um, and also the text of what I'm t telling you about this afternoon. And then I will also share three PowerPoints which are based on the Emmaus account. So the first one is on the um, uh, liturgy of the word. The second is preparation of the gifts and the Eucharist. So it's my life in the presence of Christ. And the third is uh, communion and mission. So that's all based on these more expanded version of what, what I have put into one shorter presentation this morning. And this presentation will also have um, the texts behind. So when I gave that in Germany, we recorded that, we put the text and put that into the, the, um, the PowerPoint itself with the notes, and then I translated that and you will get that translated version, obviously. <laughs> Good. So what I am going to talk about this afternoon is one concrete example for this liturgical catechesis. And I highlight that's, of course, only one example, um, which I have experienced uh, using it for five years in my own parish and has been designed by the German Catechetical Association and is used in several also in many parishes in Germany, also in a kind of an adapted way, but I present you um, that, and then we will have one concrete example to look at more closely. So what is communion preparation? It says it's to be open for the encounter with the word of God and with Jesus Christ in the bread of life. So very easy. These are presentations I also used for um, the parents to introduce them what we are going to do in the formation for their kids. So what is, what is key? What is needed is a way in which children can be gradually introduced in the celebration of the Eucharist. What is needed is a form of practice comparable to how children learn an instrument or sport. So they learn to play the flute, not theoretically, but practically. So if you look back at the principles we had, explain and experience, that has this highlighting also of the practice aspect. And they, do, they don't start with the complicated melodies, but with the simple ones, and then they add things step by step. Learning thrives through repetition and the gradual expansion of the skills. And similarly, also children should become familiar with prayers and worship by doing it step by step. And you will see that is a process which helping them learning how the mass is going on from the beginning to the end. And through repetition, the words and gestures of the liturgy should become second nature. Yeah? Being uh, kind of in a positive way, we, we sometimes say, okay, that's routine. But for them, it needs to become, in a certain sense, a routine. And the routine is not simply something outside, but something that reaches the heart. If you think of the principle of the active participation, leading from the outside to the inside. And in this way, they should ultimately be able to experience that liturgy is a living dialogue between God and them. Oh, sorry, I did not click. <laughs> sorry. But now you have the whole, the whole thing. Yeah? So it's gradually introduced by practicing and repetition, step by step, going forward. <clears throat> so this is, has been published in the book that you see on the right side, and which has kind of a liturgical catechetical services on the way to First Communion, Weg Gottesdienste, Weg means way, and Gottesdienst service, so way services 
I would translate it more explanedly as liturgical catechetical services on the way. So why on the way? Because we are first on the way to God. So we, our life and faith journey. So re that reflects already the first principle of life and liturgy. Then we are on the way to first communion. So we are go uh, going on a journey of discovery. For the kids, many things are new. They have not been introduced by their family. Some come without knowing the Our Father and the sign of the cross. So that's, we are going on a journey of discovery. That's a path in community and families and parish meet. I think that's very important because we get people who are through First Communion get in contact with us who never saw us before. Or they move from one place to the other, so that's a perfect way of introducing them into the parish community. We walk a path through the Holy Mass, so growing into the liturgy is the purpose. The children are not familiar also with the church itself, so we are walk, walk a path through the church and exploring the church building. So, of course, the altar, but also the baptismal font, confessional, and so on. Everything will become more clear when I go into details. One point that this yeah, way services really highlight is that we go the way in community of parents and children. Um, so parents are kind of involved spectators. It might be that from a liturgical perspective, spectators, we don't have spectators, we have only participants. But those who are not familiar to it say, okay, I, I simply stay in the second row. And they first, they say, okay, you're spectators, but they will be more and more involved going through the process. And also those who uh, have these, have to perform these services, the catechists, we are all ourselves on the way. And so we also, that's also an experience that also the, the parents who have been involved more closely from previous years, they also say, okay, by being a, serving as a catechist, we have been growing in our faith. So to sum this up, you learn to pray through praying, and you learn to worship by doing it regularly. That's the basic principle. Therefore, these liturgical catechetical services follow a fixed sequence. They are first kind of introductory elements. So first, everybody gathers outside of the church. So in practice means that the kids are playing around and so on. They come 10 minutes earlier, five minutes earlier, one minute earlier, but they all come around and have this, yeah, staying simply outside of the church and being, yeah, playing around and getting a lot of, of energy out, yeah. <laughs> um, then the children are always involved in the services, so you distribute the tasks ahead of that. So you are carrying the cross, you are saying this one um, at the beginning. And then we lined up in front of the door, and when everybody was silent, then we opened the door and had the procession in. And then everybody kneels at the back of the church and simply becomes silent or is silent and gets you accustomed to the church. And that concludes with a concluding prayer. Then we have the procession to the actual place of the liturgy, which is normally in front, but sometimes if it starts at the baptismal font, then we go to the baptismal font and so on. And then there is a liturgical opening with the sign of the cross. Now that's the introduction. 
And then the central elements, which have the focus on the catechesis, there is first the, the, the sequence can vary from, from week to week. Um, there is, but always there is praise, thanksgiving, and petition, so prayer, the proclamation of the word of God, and the catechesis on the worship element that is central for this particular service. So for instance, is it um, the confiteor, or is it, um, is it the word of God, is it bringing the gifts? So one central element, and I will show you the 14 or 15 of them. And the idea is that the catechesis explains it, but also puts it into practice, and then it's a kind of an internalization by also doing it. And the celebration, and it always concludes with a meditative conclusion where music is turned on and, peop and this, the um, children and parents are led into prayer or personal prayer, which then helps them after communion to have their personal prayer. And then cl the closing elements are always the same, the Our Father and the liturgical conclusion with the sign of the cross, then the procession out and farewell and invitation to the next one, to the next week. Or, yeah. So it may become more clear when I simply show you the 14 um, or 15 services. The first one is God speaks in silence. And I will give you a slide on every of these um, services. So they learn the sign of the cross and praying in silence. Then I am baptized, remembering yeah, why we take also the, water, the holy water at the beginning. Then I want to be a friend of Jesus, a communion promise. And I bring my broken pieces to God. That is a confession or the confiteor at the beginning. Um, then God speaks through Holy Scripture, obviously the liturgy of the word. I will listen to God. These two on the liturgy of the word. Then the seventh is a kind of a summary of the first. This is uh, it's about the holy places that we had visited, the baptismal font, confessional, ambo, and altar. Then from the eighth one on, it turns to the Eucharistic part of the Mass. So Jesus stays with his friends, remembrance of the Last Supper. Jesus dies and lives, the Paschal mystery. Also here including the way of the cross in the church. Then the tenth, Jesus remains with us, the Lord's Supper then, back then, and now. What I can give to God, so that's obviously the preparatory offertory. And Jesus gives peace and we forgive each other, the sign of peace. Jesus, a treasure in my hand, communion, and I remain Jesus' friend, blessing, and mission. What we have added in the parish is a 15th one on adoration, because also at the communion day in the afternoon, of course, we had also adoration, and therefore they needed to int be introduced to that as well. So we had a 15th beyond the official 14 on the um, on adoration. And the pictures might help you to get a sense of how that simply looks like with kids. So the first one centers on the silent prayer, which is um, and the, the sign of the cross and the silent prayer. The sign of the cross is always at the very beginning. So let's say Peter comes out and makes the sign of the cross, and we all do in the name of the Holy Spirit. And then this prayer, silence and pr um, silent prayer that you see here on the picture is when the music is turned on, so kind of meditative music, and then the, pe the children fold their hands, put it on their forehead, and say, God, I want to think of you three times. And then they put it here, God, I want to speak to you. God, I open my heart to you. And that's three times with 
pauses in between. It's the idea of let them do something that always also helps them to put the, the hands together and that ultimately should help them to at the end, and that's at, at, the, at, very, at all the services at the end, and that should help them then to have their personal prayer after they have received communion then in the Mass. And the second one, I am baptized, so the remembrance of the own baptism at the baptismal font, as you can see. And so the children remember that they are baptized. They, we show also the register of with, with their names in it, or some of them who have been baptized in that church. And they learn to be thankful for it because everybody puts his hand in the holy water and says, I thank you for my baptism. So leading up to, okay, if you take holy water at the beginning, you remember your baptism. And how important it is in life to care for the friendship with God and they again practice the silent prayer. A third one <coughs> is the promise, the communion promise, I want to be a friend of Jesus. Um, so they, they get a sheet of paper with, um, where in preparation, though we did that at school for instance or in the parish setting, um, so before that um, service, and where they put their name, I, Marco, promise to, to go to this preparation and to engage into that preparation for First Communion. So the children kind of decide for their friendship with Jesus and promise to prepare well for the First Communion and to participate reliably in the liturgy. They are strengthened for the further journey by a special blessing at the end. And so this promise will be in a verse, and this verse will be brought before the tabernacle. And at the beginning of the next service, this verse, or all the other services, this verse is taken into the middle. One is taken out. Whose is it? Okay, then they read there. The one who is it reads this. I promise to be diligent in this. And then it's put on the altar. I know that some parishes skip that because they say that's not a real decision. We more or less tell them to do so. Um, um, yeah, but it's so far part of that program. The fourth is I bring my broken pieces to God. So the penitential act at the beginning. And we will look at that more closely with the text. Uh, which is completely prepared and that will be distributed afterwards. afterwards. Um, and then after, th in the parish, we, ha we used it after that to break and have then the preparation for first confession and then return again to the next um, catechetical service with the topic of that God speaks through scripture so the children and the parents learn about the importance of Holy Scripture as the word of God for us. They learn about different editions of the Bible. That's always interesting. You show them the children's Bible, but a very precious one, ooh, and so on. And the gospel book, oh, that's a very heavy one. And to show them and so on, to, to highlight the meaning of the word of God. There's also the St. Augustine's um, story of uh, take and, and read in the catechesis on that um, and then they are introduced on this on the gospel procession and they are invited to have the candles and one is even allowed to carry the gospel book that's always very special um, and the interesting point is that we realized that the mm, the amount of kids who then join the altar servers doubled after we have used that because we said okay this is something you all obviously like and they like love these things um, so if you want to continue that you become an altar server and you can do it every Sunday um, so that's I think one of the real advantages of this project 
And so they learn that the word of God is precious and valuable for us and that we especially honor it in the liturgy of the word. Then the next one is dedicated to I want to listen to God and the three signs of the cross before the gospel. Again, the idea, why are we doing this? Not only you make the sign of the cross, but what's the meaning behind? So uh, illuminate the heart, then I will speak, and, and the mind, I will speak of it, and to take it to heart. So the children and the parents realize that God speaks to us in Holy Scripture, and that his word wants to grow in us. So the gospel which is proclaimed is the one the sower, Jesus and um, sowing the seed. Um, and they learn the meeting, meaning of the three signs of the cross before the gospel. Then the seventh one is kind of a summary of what they have been, uh, have learned before. And so this way service is meant to summarize the previous services and prepare the following ones which are about the encounter with Jesus in the Eucharist. And so we go back to first uh, the baptismal font, then here this was the confessional chapel, the word, and then it brings you to the altar. The eighth one, the children learn that before his death, Jesus had a special meal with his disciples or his friends in which he showed them his friendship. So it's often is based on friendship, on relationship. That's a, re a theme that is coming over and over again. And the children should be able to experience themselves as disciples of Jesus through a kind of a communion play. So it's not the Eucharist. It's very clear that it's not the same. Um, and as you see on the picture, that is not on the altar, but is in front of the altar. So you have 12 of them being the 12 disciples and one um, uh, playing Jesus. And so they should experience that Jesus wants to remain connected with his friends even beyond his death. And so introducing yeah, the Last Supper. So that it doesn't remain simply a play, the next service explains the paschal mystery which is the meaning so jesus dies and jesus lives and this jesus dies is exemplified with the stations of the cross so that in this way also a kind of why do we have these things on the wall are explained children and parents remember that suffering and death of jesus they learn that we make jesus death present at every eucharist Parents and children learn the connection between Holy Thursday, the Lord's Supper that they had celebrated before, then Good Friday, Jesus' death, and Easter, Jesus' resurrection. And children and parents learn about the stations of the cross of the church. And what is highlighted, of course, also the Paschal candle, so that you have symbols in the church for the Paschal mystery. And all leads up then to the altar. The tense service is one that's really striking to me because it remembers on the one side the Lord's Supper that they played before the altar and then they take the same cloth and put it on the altar. So to highlight the Lord's Supper back then and that the Eucharist is the continuation of what Christ has instituted. So children and parents realize that the Lord's Supper still exists today. That we celebrate Holy Mass every Sunday because we are now Jesus' friend and that we also remain united to Jesus through the celebration of his death and resurrection. And the next one goes on to the participation of the gifts of what I can give to God. Children and parents learn to the meaning of the offertory and become attentive to all that God, the creator of all life, has given us. And the next point is that the children think about how they can respond to God and his love, his generosity. 
and the children are encouraged to give back to God, so they think, what can I offer to God? So they put on my prayers, my time coming here, and put this on a sheet of paper, and put this into the basket, which is then also brought um, to the altar together with um, bread and wine. Then the twelfth catechetical service is Jesus gives peace and we forgive each other. So it's about the sign of peace. Christian, the children and parents learn about the sign of peace and its meaning. They remember that Jesus also experienced terrible disappointments and yet always forgave people. So that's the passage in, in the gospel. And they learn that Jesus also gives us forgiveness that remembers again the fourth catechetical service with the, I bring my sh broken pieces to God and that we also have to forgive each other. Then the next one is Jesus, a treasure in my hand. So it's preparing for communion. Parents and children learn that Jesus is precious to us li like a treasure. So the children learn how to handle the Eucharistic bread with reverence. So it's not that we give it to them, but okay, you make it like a throne, right? like St. Cyril's, for instance, says, okay, make a throne for Jesus. Um, and they practice holding their hands for receiving um, communion. The 14th one is I remain Jesus' friend, so blessing and mission. And it is also kind of a summary of all that has been done. So you see on the picture that this is very this visible thing. So it starts in the, here for instance, you see the, the holy water pot and the cross, the communion, uh, the birth for the communion pro promise. Then on the next one, this is the, the sharps put on the candle and for the forgiveness on this violet thing. Then you have the gospel book on a heart with the candles. Um, and then what we can bring to God, bread and wine. And this is death and resurrection. So all the symbols which have been implied before come up again in the last um, service. So parents and children remember the past services and recognize the basic structure of the Holy Mass. They learn that every Mass ends with blessing and sending, and the important meaning of this final rite should be made accessible to them. So that's the goal of this um, last one. But th this should give you simply an idea of the whole process, and to make it more concrete, I would like to go into one of them and um, so we have copies, and so we share the copies of the fourth one. And so in this book, all, all are prepared like this. So the targets, so the children and the parents realize that human, human sins and something is broken in the process, our relationship with fellow human beings, our friendship with God. And they learn that at the beginning of each mass, we ask God for forgiveness in the penitential act. act. And then it also how highlights what is needed to be prepared and who is doing what. And if you turn the page to the service, you have the opening elements. And it starts with the procession, so everybody is gathered first outside. Then when everybody is silent, we open the door, they enter and go to the back of the church and they kneel down. And so they become silent. There's an invitation to silent prayer. For instance, yeah, we are now in the house of God again. We see Jesus in the tabernacle in front. We prepare for, to meet him. And so we become silent. 
and then afterwards, the silence, and then there is always a prayer that introduces all the kind of the theme. Um, yeah, God, we are sending our thoughts to you now. We, we are here again in the church. Just a moment ago, we were working and playing, talk, talking and working. Now you invite us to become quiet. Let us discover today you love us, even if everything does not always go smoothly in our lives. And then there is a procession into the sanctuary. And there was one who bears a cross. This is also one of the privileges yeah, that they always like to bear the cross in front, um, together with the pastor. And then the others are following behind. And then they are sitting in front of, in the sanctuary, also been before the sanctuary, we have simply a bench because then it's easier before the, the, the pews because then it's easier to come out if they do something instead of moving around all the others. And then it starts with the sign of the cross. So for instance, Luke makes the sign of the cross and speaks in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then Luke comes here and does it. And so everybody is, at the beginning at least, seeing it, and then everybody is doing it on their own. And then in this case, they, the holy water pot is given around to remember of baptism, and um, then the promise of communion is taken from the birth. Whose who's is it? And then they show it. And then there is a, a song, whatever, yeah, it obviously would need to be adopted. And after these initial elements, introductory rites, you come to the central part of the catechesis. And I summarize simply this catechesis. This is a girl who plays in the living room and it's raining outside and she wants to play circus. And unfortunately, the dad comes and says, oh, it's not good that you play it inside. You could break, break something. Yeah, yeah, I go out, no problem. But then she says, oh, it's raining. So she stays inside. And what happens? She breaks the favorite vase of her mother. And so the brother comes in. Ah, oh, what are you doing? And so on. They fight about. Then uh, we go to the mother. The mother comes. What's about? Oh, nothing, nothing. And, and she goes away. So, and, um, and then she goes in her room and thinks of it. And then, okay, what is she thinking about? Okay, what everything that had not, did not go well. And then to demonstrate that, um, the priest has a pot, clay pot, and simply drops it. By the way, it's important to have something else. It's all explained in the, in the introduction to have, let's say, a stone or something where it can drop so that it doesn't <laughs> damage the church floor, yeah. Um, but it's obvious, and, and they are fascinating because they, you don't, would not expect a priest letting a uh, uh, clay pot drop, yeah. And of course, it breaks in several pieces. Um, and so if you turn the page, um, let children ask, can you put that together again? Obviously, it does not work. Yeah. So then, say, adults often sweep that under the carpet. So you 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 put one child puts it under the carpet of the altar. So is it away? No, it's still there. Obviously. So we can't simply hide our sins. Um, and then it goes on. So we need to to handle with that and to accept that and, and then in the catechesis on the bottom of the page it more or less makes a shift from breaking the pot to breaking a relationship and so then it introduces what, what sin is it also says it's good to have already spoken what sin is before so that it can be um, rem recalled to mind or otherwise it would need to be introduced more um, and so as and God wants as this pot needs to be whole again so also God wants us to be whole and bright and therefore a candle is lit and we bring all these um, you know, broken pieces to God and put this on a purple 
uh, cloth. So that's um, simply to bring it to God and light this candle. So that's a visual way of making clear, okay, I can't simply, I need to deal somehow with my sins and the broken relationships. And because it's an example of the girl who had the broken relationship both with the brother, with the, with the father who said, don't play inside, with the mother who said, oh, I'm going away. Um, so it's, it's easy to connect relationship from the example to relationship with God, which is broken, and that's sin. Um, and then everybody receives one of these broken pieces, so already prepared, so they had something very concrete. And all the parents receive one of the broken pieces. Um, and then it goes on in the middle of the page, we now think about our broken pieces. And each of us has broken pieces, his sins, also me, all the adults, the priest says. And then it turns on the music to bring in uh, into a way of silence. And then it's exactly what we have done before. So God, I send my thoughts to you. God, I want to talk to you. God, I open my heart for you each one three times um, but in this case having this piece of the pot broken pot here and then the priest says a concluding prayer that's in the fall and you turn the page God we too sometimes make broken pieces we also hurt others or quarrel this is bad that the trust is broken but you love us we can bring all our broken pieces. You forgive us. Thank you. Help us to forgive each other as you do. Amen. And then our broken pieces, everything we have done wrong, our mistakes and sins, we can bring to Jesus. As a sign of this, we now place the broken pieces that we hold in our hands to the candle, the Jesus candle. And then they put this broken piece to Jesus. And then what's following is that the confiteor is said. So one of the children reads the confiteor and also this Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. And so you see this kind of a nice way of putting catechesis in a level that children can relate to and, and see and connect these experiences that to um, the liturgy. So it's again this idea of connecting liturgy and life, the life of the broken pieces, the story of the, of the girl, with what we are doing at the penitential rite. And then we come to the final element. So this is more the catechetical part, the main part. And then at the end it comes to the final elements where we say the Our Father together, we bring back the verse with the promises to the tabernacle, and at the end there is a genuflection in front of the tabernacle. And that's a very nice um, phrase. When they kneel down they say, God before you I am small. And they stand, God with you I am great. So to explain um, yeah, the meaning of the genuflection. And then everybody processes out and the priest says, great that you came and wonderful that you yeah, praise the children and invites to the next one. This is a kind of how um, this is simply one example and all 14 are kind of in this way and structure. What I am also giving you is, if you are interested in the whole thing, it has been automatically translated, there was deeper, um, but you can see the idea of having a liturgical catechesis, in the sense that is catechesis inside the liturgical celebration itself. 
which combines both liturgy and life in the example, the principal one, which makes them participate, let them do something, that's principle two, active participation, uh, which expresses symbols, yeah, the broken pieces, broken relationship, um, and where the priest is obviously also involved, but also other parents and, and lay ministers who help with setting all these up. And so it's, I think, a way that really integrated or tried to make these principles and put them into practice. Yeah. Yeah. First, how long is each benediction? And second, if, if this is done on Sunday morning, you mentioned, yeah. then the, the family has to say it also for Sunday mass. So that's done normally not on Sunday. So we did that on a Tuesday, for instance. Um, it takes about 40 minutes. Depend, one is a little bit longer, others are shorter. Depends how many. Um, songs you integrate, um, but maximum is 40 minutes. The, the, the first ones are small, as shorter, the others are about 40 minutes. Um, the problem, of course, is that so they like these things and come on, on, on Tuesday for that, and we always invite, okay, we see each other next Sunday, um, but that's always uh, a struggle as we know that's not automatically connected. So the mention, when I mentioned before, they did not do that. The pastors I spoke to, they had more other ways of, of showing. It could be maybe also kind of integrated, but it's, that, that's a serious in itself. What we did, okay, that's, that's leading up in the first part of the preparation. When we started in September, the end of September, and communion is, was in May, so you have the 14 things in the beginning, broken a little bit for the preparation of first confession. And then you don't have more of these, but we, that leads you um, to, to highlight more the Sunday Mass. And we integrated them also, for instance, this, this uh, prayer in, in silence, we did also in the Sunday Mass after, at the end of communion. Um, so that they recognized this connection. And on this way also the parish community, of course not every Sunday, but realizes, okay, that's how the communion kids are present among us. <laughs>